Pixar has created an entire universe around their films that fans debate endlessly, and Cars is no exception. The film sticks in our minds as one of the greatest of the last decade, but how much do we really know about it? The lore, or what little there is, exists on nothing but speculation alone. Have we been lied to this entire time? What's the truth behind the strange world inhabited solely by machines? Don't eat our dirt. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button below and become a member of our notification squad. You'll be the first to know when hot new content Content drops. Hey, was that floating like a Cadillac or was that stinging like a Beamer? I'm confused. <laughs> Paul Newman wasn't in Cars 3. Paul Newman, beloved actor and voice of Doc Hudson in the first Cars film, passed away in 2008. Fans were surprised to see so many flashbacks to him in the recent Cars 3, but the lines you heard weren't voice synthesization. Several lines were cut from Cars and reused in most recent film, but there are also hours upon hours of recordings of Newman speaking with other cast members about Cars in between takes. Some of the words of wisdom you hear him pass on to Lightning McQueen are simply that, the wisdom of a man who loved Cars just talking about his passion. Newman was an actor of such caliber that nothing can ever replace him, but hearing his voice in 2017 in a role he's so loved for is certainly heartwarming. Music, sweet music. Lightning's taking on of his mentor's title and number in The Return of Racing is a fitting homage to someone who loved automobiles, both on screen and off. The past few years haven't been kind to actors. The world has lost more talent than it can handle, but at least this was a fitting way to honor one of the greats in a way he would surely have appreciated. Nature isn't normal. If you think that only humans have vanished, think again. In the Cars universe, even nature itself has been changed to fit a world run entirely by machines. In Cars 2, viewers catch a glimpse of Mount Fuji, but something's a bit off. The mountain has been carified in the sense that snow runoff from the mountain looks like tire tracks. Since Mount Fuji is a volcano, that makes us wonder, does the lava have machine parts? Are raindrops actually tiny drops of car? It's entirely possible that the frame is just a visual reference, but it may be something more. Another hint is the rain Rainbow Bridge, also seen during the Japan trip. It's made up of various automobile parts instead of the parts you would normally expect to see on a bridge. The implication of a world run entirely by machines or endless is everything made up of components that cards would be familiar with rather than those humans would use. Fans have spent hours putting together clues found in the film so far, and as Pixar releases more movies set in the universe, as well as more movies overall, the connected universe theory that is so popular among fans is sure to gain more ground. I haven't gone this fast in years. <clears throat> Cars is old. The original Cars was released in 2006. That may seem ancient. After all, it was 11 years ago, but there's another thing to keep in mind. In 2006, Blu-ray was brand new, but many movies were still released on VHS. Car holds the unique honor of being the first Pixar movie to be released on Blu-ray, but it was also the last film released on VHS. Think about that for a moment. One of the oldest forms of media and one of the newest existed side by side for a brief period. Ooh, I'm gonna have to go get myself some coolant. Many of you watching this video might not even remember watching anything on VHS. But for the older members of our audience, the agony of rewinding a tape just to watch it again, or to jump back and rewatch a part you didn't fully understand, is one that sticks out well in our mind. DVD and Blu-ray changed the way we watch media forever, and we will be eternally grateful for how much easier it made the process. After all, movies look way better in Blu-ray and DVD than they ever did on VHS. I think we've all tried to block the grainy quality from our minds. The purists can keep their low-quality movies, but hey, we want crisp HD. I'm Mia. I'm here. We're, We're like, like your, your biggest, biggest fans. Good job. Pixar exists in cars. No studio wants to go uncredited after all the hard work they put into a film, and Pixar's no exception. If you look closely, you can see Pixar Studios itself during the Piston Cup race as the jets fly overhead. The studio included this little Easter egg as a homage to all the animators that spent thousands of hours drawing and rendering the film into the creation that it is today. But let's face it, it was also a bit of self-promotion, but who can credit them? There's also a reference to Toy Car Story later in the movie that implies the Cars Pixar Studio is alive and well and producing all of the films we know and love. Sheriff, this is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic! Is there a Cars version of Andy? Does he play with hubcaps and tire irons instead of Buzz and Woody? The world may never know. Taking this thought further would imply there is also a Cars Brave, a Cars Wally, -E, and all of the other franchises Pixar has brought to life. Part of us wants to see how these films would be adapted to the Cars universe. After all, it would be interesting to see the way a car would be transformed into a bear. Hey, what are you doing? Get a good peek, city boy. The Cars universe has doctors. 
So far, we've talked about how in the Cars universe there are multiple jobs, and how the cars basically take on human roles. That said, where are the mechanics? As far as we can tell, mechanics tend to be more focused on improving performance and speed rather than repairing busted cars. That job falls to the doctors. It makes sense if you think about it. The world is inhabited entirely by sentient cars, and their health and well-being is based on a series of factors very different from our own. Rather than doing regular blood tests and checkups, they need oil changes and tire rotations. Doctors in the Cars universe are the mechanics of this universe. That also implies that equivalent injuries exist. Smooth like pudding, huh? Kids often break their arms or legs, so a younger car that doesn't know its limits might end up breaking an axle or hopping a tire. Older cars might get rusty and need a bit of lubrication, which would be the equivalent of a joint replacement. And what about repairs to the engines? That must be like open heart surgery. So have med schools changed? Do doctors have to go to medical school or do they go to mechanic school? And which is the more difficult to understand? You look a little light on weapons. The Cars universe is peaceful. We know for a fact that World War II, or some version of it, existed in the Cars universe. There is a retired car named Sarge that specifically references the Battle of the Bulge, and in direct dvd Special Planes, a character named Skipper talks about how his entire squadron was shot down in the Pacific Theater. Not only does this imply that planes can die, it implies that somewhere, somehow, there was a car Hitler, and a car Mussolini, and a car Churchill. In Cars 2, Mater is handled by a British spy. Who are you with? FBI, CIA. Let's just say I'm AAA affiliate. What sort of political upheaval is still taking place that the Cars universe needs spies? Is war still a potential outcome? What if Cars 4 is about a battle between two nations and we see Cars soldiers? So many questions without answers, but the implications are worrisome. Just think, it's possible that the two atomic bombs dropped onto Japan were sentient. That means they were aware of their purpose and what they were doing, and it all means they would be capable of not exploding if they didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, that's disturbing. Listen, I'm gonna cut to the chase. Me, you, dinner. Cars is male-oriented. It's an easy conclusion to draw. After all, there's a lot of talk about car guys, not so much car girls. And given the fact that the Cars films have thus far been about their male protagonists, Lightning and Doc in their first film, Mater and Finn in the second, it's a breath of fresh air to see female protagonists in Cars 3. Although Cruz Ramirez is just a trainer, she tells Lightning that she dreams of racing. She hasn't been given a chance to try until Lightning pulls into the pits and has her finish the race for him so she can have her break. The story focuses more on her journey of self-realization than it does on Lightning gradually paving the way for a new protagonist in future films. Is it a departure from the tried and true formula? Sure, but it's also a treatment to the diversity Pixar demonstrates in each and every one of their films. Who knows what the future of the Cars franchise holds? We're excited to see how the story plays out and what sort of protagonists are introduced in the future. Films that promote strong female characters are desperately needed. Guido, your eyes do not deceive you. We are in Italy. We are home. Cars exist in a different world. If all of Pixar's films are connected, as other theories would have us believe, then it raises terrifying implications for humanity. Nowhere in any of the films are humans depicted, but the cars themselves are clearly designed for human use. They have seats, steering wheels, and door handles. If they were nothing more than anthropomorphic vehicles, they wouldn't need the conveniences that humans do. What are you selling? Headlights, Monsieur, headlights! <gasps> there is also evidence of religion in the Pope Mobile, the great manufacturer, and several other comments throughout the movie. The cars have a religion they follow but where did they learn that? Is it a remnant of society left over from a previous time? Or did humans somehow become the cars? Perhaps a freak occurrence mutated all the humans into vehicles they were in at the time. But if so, it makes us wonder when and how that happened, as well as how long this version of the world has existed. Pixar's overarching theories all but prove the films are connected, so how humanity goes from cars to Wally, where humans are still abundant, remains to be seen. But we would like to see a film where the first proto-car evolves from a pile of scrap and random components. It looks awful. Well, it matches the rest of the town. Cars exist in a utopia. There are no humans to be seen, which is a question all on its own. That said, what do the cars do when they aren't racing? Do they play games and entertain themselves? Or do they live normal lives like normal people would? The fact is that someone has to be pushing advancement. Cars have to have jobs, otherwise the world couldn't continue. Someone has to maintain the racetracks, after all. Mater is a tow truck, so his job is clear from the outset. You owe me $32,000 in lethal fees. 
What? That said, if some of the spin-offs of the main movie, we see chef cars preparing food for restaurant patrons, announcers, and other types of occupations. If you believe the cars live in a utopia where all their needs are met, you'd be wrong. Cars have to work just like we do, and their lives are likely filled with the same stresses and worries as ours. Maybe their worries are even more intense. After all, cars need money to purchase oil. Oil is an essential part of their motor, and without it, the engine could quite literally explode. While we may go hungry for a few days when we're broke, the citizens of the Cars universe might actually die. The next time he makes a stop, instead of saying ka-chow, he's gonna go kaboom. <laughs> <laughs> the Cars Live Forever Cars is a children's movie, so it may not exactly be appropriate to discuss life and death in such a hypothetical situation, but we have to wonder, do the Cars and Pixar's cars actually live forever? If not, how do they die? Throughout the film, rusted cars can be seen throughout the landscape, as are parts of cars. If you think about this for a moment, it's truly horrifying, a landscape littered with limbs and bits of creatures that were once living. No one seems to think twice about it. And if cars die from old age, is the rust equivalent to white hair? Mater isn't just brown he's rusty. Nothing sues a rusty bumper like Rusties. Since rust is the result of oxidation, does rain affect the vehicles in a strange way? Do they age faster if they live in a rainy environment? While it seems far-fetched, it's no different than a person who lives in a humid area getting sick more often than someone that lives in a dry environment. Pixar's cars raise more questions than it gave answers to, but one thing is for sure, the cars don't live forever. Lightning McQueen is in the prime of his life, but eventually he'll just be an old car that's left behind by advancement. Ah! You! Why didn't my death ray kill you? Death ray! The Pixar Cinematic Universe is chock full of Easter eggs and references to itself and other films, and Cars is no exception. Regardless of what you may have been told or might believe about the films, there are some parts that will always surprise you. What did you find most shocking? Comment below and let us know! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and be among the first to know when new content releases. Thanks for watching.